Hello and welcome to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In today's video, the Up and Up series returns as we update and upgrade our Edgar Markov EDH deck. Greetings and salutations to the MTGBC. You are the MTG Burgeoning community. Thank you for joining us in this installment of the Up and Up series. We are going to update and upgrade one of the decks that's currently residing in the BCC. Of course, that is the Burgeoning Commander Catalog, of which you can browse a playlist on the channel itself. In the description below, you can also click to see the current deck list over at tappedout.net. All right, we've got a few cards going in and a few cards coming out. So let's begin with one of my favorite cards from 2022 and one that I believe is criminally and insanely undervalued, underloved, underplayed, underestimated, and that is Starlight Spectacular. We have an enchantment for two and two white. It has the Unfinity Parade mechanic. At the beginning of combat on our turn, creature we choose creatures we control one at a time until each creature we control has been chosen. Each of those creatures gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature chosen before it. So the first creature that we choose gets plus zero, plus zero. The second creature we choose gets plus one, plus one, and so on and so forth until we have chosen every single creature. This card should not be valued at less than a dollar, which is its current market price. I don't know if it's because of the vitriol that the unset has. This is an eternally legal card. I don't know if the community is just neglecting it or if the community hasn't just caught up to what the power level of this card is, but this is a game ender. For example, if we curve into this spell on our fourth turn and we cast a vampire on our first turn, creating a creature token with Edgar, if we cast a vampire on our second turn, creating a creature token with Edgar, and then we cast a vampire on our third turn, creating another creature token with Edgar, of course, Edgar's eminence ability triggers even when he's in the command zone, we untap on turn four, we have six creatures on our side of the battlefield three of which are 1-1 one, one tokens, and then three other vampires of varying power and toughness levels in addition to any potential abilities. So we cast Starlight Spectacular, and we immediately move to combat, and we are already swarming at least one of our opponents with near-lethal combat damage. Starlight Spectacular is an amazing card in a color that is creature token heavy. White is the color for creature production. Any white deck that plays creatures, has tokens, or is tribal should include Starlight Spectacular. And of course, that includes this Edgar Markov deck. Token decks, tribal decks need to have Starlight Spectacular. It is a game-ending card, and it is only a matter of time until the community catches up to exactly what this card can do. This is not financial advice. This is not a financial channel. Starlight Spectacular is not a card that should be valued at less than $1. That is going to change. It's only a matter of time. Starlight Spectacular is going in. It's going to replace Cathar's Crusade. Another enchantment with a slightly higher mana value. This is 3 and 2 white versus the 2 and 2 white for Starlight Spectacular. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under our control, we put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature we control. Yes, we do have a pretty strong plus one, plus one counter theme woven into this Edgar Markov build. And we are going to slightly weaken that so that we can include a win condition in the form of Starlight Spectacular. 
One of the thought processes behind this swap is if we invest 5 mana in a deck that wants to maintain tempo from turn 1 until we shuffle up and say good game to our opponents after defeating them, we want every single turn to be worth it. Every spell we cast has to go towards implementing, enhancing, and strengthening our vampire army, sending it into combat and winning as quickly as possible. Investing 5 mana into this enchantment as it ETB it does nothing for us. We must wait until either there is additional mana available to cast a spell right then and there, or we have to hope we can make it all the way back to our turn so that we can cast some more creatures to enable Cathar's Crusade plus one plus one ability. It is a very powerful card. It is one of my favorite cards. It's from Avacyn Restored, which is also one of my all-time favorite sets. But in this Edgar Markov deck, Starlight Spectacular is going to do a better job at winning than Cathar's Crusade. It costs less mana, it's quicker, it has a greater impact on the battlefield when it ETBs, and that's what we are looking for. We want tempo, we want to work fast, we want to amass an army, and we want to attack with it as soon as we can and win the game in short-turn order. That is the primary reason why Starlight Spectacular is going to take the place of Cathar's Crusade. All right, the next card going in is another white enchantment. This time the mana value is just two and a white, and it's Tokasha's Welcome. We have here whenever one or more creatures with mana value of three or less ETB under our control, we draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So we do have a plethora of vampire creature spells in the current 99 of this build that have CMCs of three or less. We're not even worried about that, because with Edgar's Eminence ability safely triggering from the command zone, as long as we cast a vampire creature spell, we will create a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token. That is always going to have a mana cost of zero, so it will always trigger Tokasia's Welcome. It's okay that it only triggers once per turn, as long as we keep casting a spell. Let me say that one more time. As long as we keep casting vampire creature spells during our turn, we're going to replace one of them each time through Takasya's Welcome. This will help us to get more cards into our hand, hopefully they're vampires, which allows us to cast more vampires, creating more tokens with Edgar, and creating a much bigger vampire armor army as quickly as we possibly can, and Tokasya's Welcome is going to help us do that by maintaining our tempo and getting more cards into our hand. <clears throat> In a deck like Edgar Markov, it can, it can run out of gas very quickly because we're casting spells as quickly as we can, and any way that we can replenish some of those cards lost, we will welcome into the 99 with arms wide open. That is the place of Tokasya's Welcome. It is going to replace one of our removal spells in the 99 of this deck. Now, we're in Mardu Colors, so we are no, we have no shortness, no shortness? We have no um, restricted number of available removal spells, both, both spot and mass, so it's, it's, it's okay to slightly weaken our removal suite for the purposes of maintaining tempo and getting more cards into our hand. Another thought process here is, in addition to drawing that card each turn that we get a vampire into play, that may be another vampire, it may be a removal spell. So by removing one of the removal spells for the 99 in place of Tokasia's Welcome, we are also opening up the possibility of that card drawing us into another removal spell. So we're going to take out... Vindicate. Vindicate is a sorcery speed removal, destroys target permanent, it's one in Orzhov colors. It was a tough choice to choose one of the removal spells, but the sorcery speed seems to be the way to target when we're thinking about removal. I mean, Generous Gift does the exact same thing, you know, it gifts the controller of the destroyed permanent with a 3-3 token, but the instant speed is so much more valuable than the sorcery speed of Vindicate. When it's our turn, if we have cards in our hand that are vampires, let's face it, we're casting vampires. We're not really worried about casting a sorcery speed spot removal spell. Having the instant speed of removal spell available allows us to potentially hold up some mana in case a threat decides to come our way. 
which we can do nothing about with Vindicate in our hand. So we're going to slightly weaken our suite of removal in order to get another card draw ability into the 99, which will hopefully maintain tempo, providing more and more cards, casting more and more spells, and winning our games much more quickly. All right, so aside from those spells, we're going to upgrade our land base here. We are going to take out three basic swamps. Now, you'll notice if you've been following along with this Edgar deck since its inception, you know that the mana base here is skewed towards black. The majority of our vampire spells are black, so we want to make sure that we hit black land drops early, often, and frequently. So with that in mind, if we're going to replace three basic swamps, we want to make sure that minimum each one of those lands that are going to replace them will tap for black mana. And each one of them does. Here we have Luxury Suite. This is our Rakdos fan land. It's going to come into play tapped as long as we have two or more opponents. It will give us the black mana we need, but it will also tap for a red if we so need to use it. This is a better land than just carrying a basic swamp. Everything that we said about Luxury Suite, aside from the mana it can generate, also applies to Vault of Champions. This is our Orzhov fan land. Same thing, comes into play untapped as long as we have two or more opponents. Gives us the black mana that we, ha that we need and also taps for a white if we need it. And the third land, we're going to go from an Orzhov fan land to an Orzhov pain land in Caves of Koilos. This will tap for a colorless or we can have it deal one damage to us by tapping for a white or a black. We can take that damage because we do have some lifelink, you know, floating around as one of our underlying themes in this build. So we get the black mana if needed, we get the white mana if needed, and if not, then we're just tapping for colorless. All right, we've got one more change to the mana base here. Going in is Secluded Courtyard. This is going to ETB. We're going to choose a creature type of. Of course, we're going to choose Vampires. We can turn it sideways for a colorless mana, or we can turn it sideways for one mana of any color, but we can only spend this mana to cast a Vampire spell or to activate the, abil the ability of a Vampire creature card, or of a Vampire creature, which is the one that we would choose when Secluded Courtyard comes into play. This makes cards like Unclaimed Territory obsolete because unclaimed territory will give us all of the abilities of secluded courtyard except for the ability to use the colored mana to activate abilities of our vampires and with that being said if secluded courtyard is going into the 99 coming out is going to be unclaimed territory this card is no longer necessary Secluded Courtyard does exactly what Unclaimed Territory does, but it does it better, and it's a little more versatile with the mana that it generates. All right, there you have it, MTGBC. A few minor changes to the Edgar Markov deck. We're looking at a win condition added. We're looking at some additional card draw, and we're looking at an enhanced land base. Let me know your thoughts about these changes in the comments section below. This is MTG Burgeoning. Your channel for all things magic.